Thank you for your prayers, church. Will you join me in our call to worship, or not our call to worship, we already did that. In our affirmation of faith, we've been praying during this Colossians series in your hymnals on page 888 or on the screen from 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 6 and Colossians 1, 15 to 20. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, and then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. So we're continuing our series in Paul's letter to the Colossians. Last week I challenged you to keep Christ before all things and to put Jesus first in your lives. Amen? That in him all things hold together. So when we feel like our lives are falling apart, Jesus can hold us together in him. Amen? Amen. Well, now Paul is going to get into the heart of why he's writing to the Colossians. And it's actually today, this is where the title for the sermon series comes from. Our theme for today is the mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's turn to our neighbors and say that to each other. The mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's see what Paul has to say. Turn your Bibles or in your bulletins or on the screen to Colossians 1, 24 to 2, 5. He says, I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh, I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body. That is the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he powerfully inspires within me. For I want you to know how much I am struggling for you. And for those in Laodicea, and for all who have not seen me face to face, I want their hearts to be encouraged and united in love, so that they may have all the riches of assured understanding and have the knowledge of God's mystery, that is, Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I am saying this so that no one may deceive you with plausible arguments. For though I am absent in body, Yet I am with you in spirit, and I rejoice to see your morale and the firmness of your faith in Christ. This is the word of God for we, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, last week we heard how in him everything holds together. And I think in my life of my mother and my grandmothers and my aunts, the women that have nurtured me in faith in the church, And when my grandma passed away, my dad's mom, Patsy Glenn, she had had been a widow for a short time. We kind of drifted apart as an extended family for a while. We, We weren't gathering together for dinner, and we realized that my grandma was the glue that held us together in the family. Much like Christ holds us together, amen? So I want to thank you mothers 
women for being the glue that holds us together in our relationships. Amen? Amen. But today, it's about the mystery that is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm not one that's a guy that usually stops to smell the roses. It's hard for me to stand or sit still. And I'm always busy with something or thinking about something or, or maybe I'm, I'm occupied with emotions or, or just different things. And I'm not one to stop and smell the roses generally. But at my house at the Parsonage in Warsaw, it's been there the whole time I've lived there. But this year, I really am grateful and I appreciate that there is a lilac bush, a big, huge lilac bush that probably needs pruned, that is overflowing right now with lilac blooms. And they've always been nice to look at, and I can kind of smell them at a distance. But this was the first year I can remember where I actually dug my face in the lilacs and smelled them just as close as I could get. And it's the sweetest smell I think I've ever smelled in a while. Just the smell of, of spring and just the reminder of, of beauty. And that, that aroma, it didn't just smell good to me. This, this weekend, my kids were with me, and uh, we were trying to figure out what to get their mom for Mother's Day. And we remembered that her favorite flower were the lilacs. And so we picked lilacs, and we put them in a vase and picked some other white flowers to put in there as well. And we were going to take them to her along with some cinnamon rolls that we got. Uh, we bought from the fundraiser at the Warsaw Trinity United Methodist Church yesterday. They sold out of all their cinnamon rolls, praise God. But uh, we saved a couple cinnamon rolls for their mom, and, and, and they were going to take them to her yesterday. But before we t met up with their mom, we stopped and visited my grandma, who's recently a widow, and my mom and my aunt came by with her granddaughter. Uh, and it, it was just a wonderful time, but we, we said, hey, we don't have other lilacs, but you can at least look at them and smell them. They smell really great. Would you like to smell the lilacs? And so my mom took a smell, and she's like, hmm, that's my favorite. And then my aunt took a smell, hmm. Her granddaughter, who's just a, almost one, she peeked around at the flowers and took a sniff. And I'm like, my grandma took a smell, and she's like, hmm. And then, of course, when we gave them to, to my kid's mom, to Julia, she smelled them, and she loved them and said thank you to the kids. But as I, th I thought about that, how wonderful that smell was, that aroma. You know, we're to have the aroma of Christ, amen? Everywhere we go, we are to look like, talk like, walk like, love like, live like Jesus. Everywhere we go, we are to bring the kingdom of heaven, and the presence and the aroma of the holy love of God for this world. Amen? Amen. So I, I'm grateful this Mother's Day for the, the beautiful things in life like lilacs and seeing how happy it was for my grandma and my mom and my aunt to smell those flowers. And yesterday, after Eliana and I picked up the the, the cinnamon rolls, she said, Dad, can we take some lilacs to the ladies at the church? And so we went and picked some lilac blooms and took them to the ladies at church. And they enjoyed smelling them too. But that's what we're here for. We are here to become like Jesus as his followers. The mystery is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Not just the hope of heaven being with Jesus, which is going to be awesome but the hope of glory of knowing that we can walk with Jesus now and Christ can live in us through his Holy Spirit, amen? That Jesus can change and transform our lives and our relationships. The Holy Spirit can cultivate the fruit of God's holiness in us and healing in our lives and our relationships as he answers our prayers and he forgives us of our sins and we forgive others. And we are reconciled to God in Christ and reconciled with one another. Cultivates humility as we serve one another, just as our mothers have humbly served us in our lives. Amen? And to, so that we can show hospitality just and welcome others as Christ has welcomed us. And the, the mothers and women in our lives have nurtured us and welcomed us as we are cleaned up our, our dirty clothes and washed out the, the grass stains in our jeans as kids. Picked us up 
when we've fallen and, and tended to our wounds and cried with us when we're sad and rejoiced with us and cheered us on when we succeeded. I am so grateful for our mothers and I'm so grateful for our Father in God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at what Paul says. I think that you mothers can identify with some of Paul's longings as a spiritual parent. He wants to make known how great uh, the riches of the glory of the mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, that we proclaim Christ. It is about him. We warn everyone. We teach everyone we can in all wisdom so that we can present everyone mature in Christ. No mother wants their children to grow up without growing mature and, and being able to become a parent to others on their own, right? We all want to help one another grow. And, and to our very last breath as parents, we spiritually and by blood, we want to help the people that we love grow and know that they are loved and to love others. Amen? Amen. That so that is so that we may present everyone mature in Christ made perfect in holy love by the Holy Spirit. That when it's all said and done, we will all look like, walk like, talk like, live like, and love like Jesus. We will carry the aroma of God's love that's sweeter smelling than even the, the, the most pretty and full lilacs. And Paul struggled for them, just like our mothers struggle for us and pray for us. And they do everything they can to help us or to protect us or to encourage us. And look at verse 2 too. This is what Paul wants for the church at Colossae. But I believe that the Holy Spirit wants this for us today in 2022. I want your hearts, church, to be encouraged and your hearts united in love so that you may have all the riches of assurance. Assurance where you know in your heart of hearts through the Holy Spirit, that God loves you. That Christ died for you so that you could be forgiven and was raised for you so that you could have eternal life. So that Christ could live in your hearts through the Holy Spirit. So that you could be part of his body, the church, with Christ as the head, where Christ is first place in your life. He is the first and the last word, amen. He holds us all together in his love. And it's in Christ where we have all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom, knowing what to do and when to do it. And knowledge, having that relationship, that intimacy with God in Jesus Christ. I am so grateful for all of our mothers. And I think back to when I became a parent. And I was in that like, you know... When you're, a, when you're first a parent, you're in those first 48 hours, you're in a sleepless stupor, right? You're in a sleepless stupor, but you're sitting there holding your child. And I was holding my daughter, Eliana, and my wife, Julia, was just asleep, exhausted. And I'm just holding her in my arms. And in that moment, I'm looking at her, and she's looking at me, and I'm looking at my wife, her mom, and she's looking at her and me at the same time. And it's like in that moment, I just felt this love overflowing in me I had never felt or known before in my life. It was like the, the secrets of life and the universe were just revealed right there. This is what life is all about, staring back at me. And all she's done has been held in my arms, and I just know I would die for her in a heartbeat without hesitation. That love is just there. It's just overflowing, radiating from her in me. The three of us all together as a family, I remember that moment. That that's what life is about. Paul says the mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That she bore our image as her parents. And we too are to bear the image of God in Jesus Christ as Christ lives in us through the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So that's what I want you to remember today, that we would be like Paul and we would be like our spiritual mothers and our mothers that have 
struggled and strived with all the energy that they have to love us and care for us. So that we would make the word of God and God's love for us made fully known to our loved ones and to this world. Amen? And we would not forget this mystery that is Christ in you. The hope of glory. The hope of resurrection glory. The hope of the glory of being free from sin when we're in heaven. And there's no more crying or shame or pain or blame or fear or tears. That Christ will be our light. And we will be loved and cared for as we continue to love and care for one another in eternity. As we look at one another and and see that we all look like, talk like, live like, love like, and smell like Jesus with the aroma of God's love. Where we are encouraged and united in love. In heaven, but also here on earth in the kingdom of heaven. So that we may remember That the mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen? Amen. So I'd like to invite you to sing a song with me today as we worship God. Let's stand. You might have heard this before, but it's called Living Hope. Because we have been born into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we have been given an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading that is kept in heaven for us as we have faith in Christ. Amen? Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the dark Could imagine who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence 
the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me jesus yours is the victory hallelujah hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope jesus christ my living hope oh god you are my living hope amen so i hope you have a blessed mother's day today and i pray that the god of living hope would fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the holy spirit thanks be to god amen